So who wants to talk about the 90s again? Anybody? Anybody? I enjoyed making my forgotten stuff of the 90s segment so much that I've come up with another topic that I'm excited to share with you guys. So sit back, relax, it's time to dive in and discuss the forgotten cartoons and children's programs of the 90s. Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Notice the S in cyber. Dick Productions. That can't be right. Like, is it an acronym? Dick. Anyway, apparently this company loved alliteration and the sound of the letter R so much that they settled on a title that would give any child taking speech therapy classes PTSD because they couldn't properly pronounce the name of their favorite fucking show. Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. <sighs> no, try again. Sorry, I got a little cathartic back there. I don't know what was going on in the 90s, but for some reason we were stealing a lot of shit from Japan. As a kid, I had no idea that US production companies were taking these live action television shows from Japan and rebranding them. I always wondered why some scenes from Power Rangers looked like they were filmed using some busted ass cameras stolen from an old Godzilla set. And why the hell did Tommy's chest emblem look different when he had his helmet off? Like WTF America, we couldn't provide novice cosplay materials for our cast? Also, Rita's mouth never matched what the hell she was actually saying. <laughs> yes, I like it. Anyway, the show I was supposed to be talking about this entire time was dope. It was basically Power Rangers, but in virtual reality. Speaking of VR Troopers, you forgot about them because they made shitty Power Rangers, and there were only three of them. Good things don't come in threes. You got to round it up to at least four to capture my attention. Or go down to two because Reese's Peanut Butter Cups come in even numbers. I have developed OCD in my adult life, and my wife gets pissed because my TV volume has to be in increments of five. 20 is too quiet, and 25 is too loud, but I gotta pick one. Point is, I don't like VR Troopers because numbers. Ronin Warriors. Yeah, this show was awesome. I first caught it when it aired on UPN or USA or one of those back in 1995. You may have been exposed to it when it ran on Cartoon Network during the days of Toonami in the early 2000s. This show was also like Power Rangers. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. But it's animated, which means cooler, more impossible shit can happen on the screen. And they didn't have to rely on silly camera angles and a fire extinguisher at someone's feet to make it look like they turned into a giant freaking crab. <laughs> what do you think of me now? And remember what I said about increments of five? Yeah, they nailed it with this one. Wait, two of them are blue? Two different shades of blue? You can't do that. They're supposed to be entirely different colors to better reflect their individuality. Ah, I hate this fucking show. Gargoyles, holy crap. A Disney cartoon where monsters murder people? Let's see that again. I'm pretty sure that dude didn't fall onto a mattress on the other side of that castle wall. He did. Did y'all know that Keith David voiced the main character, Goliath? I'll turn you inside out ass first. And he also voiced Spawn. I'm waiting for your sorry ass in the afterlife. And the Arbiter. I fucking hate clowns. And the president? You lying dick! God damn that man is the goat. Biker mice from Mars. I'm not really concerned with how anthropomorphic mice learn to ride motorcycles. I'm more concerned that the creative writing team doesn't know how evolutionary biology works. Like, the title doesn't make sense. Even without the biker part. I'm too smart for these people. Hey dude. I'm not actually sure why I even like this show. I remember wishing I was older when my eight-year-old self watched it, but I couldn't really tell you why. Oh, wait. Yeah, I had the hots for Melody. Yep, I wanted to fast-track puberty to be with a girl I fell in love with through a television screen. I didn't really think that through. Actually, you know, I remember a non-creepy reason why I like this show. It had a kick-ass theme song. Hey. 
Watch out for those man-eating jackrabbits and that killer cacti. Hey, dude. I probably just forfeited all future ad revenue because I played that entire clip. Damn. Skeleton Warriors. You ever see a new product on the shelf and you're like, hey, I've seen that somewhere before, but it's impossible because it's a new thing? That's your brain telling you you're looking at some stolen shit. Exhibit A, the main baddie from Skeleton Warriors. Exhibit B, the main baddie from Army of Darkness. I can't tell you a whole lot about this cartoon, except that the skeleton people are bad and the humans are good. I only watched it for a few episodes because I purchased some of the action figures and I needed a plot to work with. Apparently the storyline of the cartoon was crap because I flipped the script and made the skeleton toys the good guys and the humans evil fascist assholes. Doesn't that sound a lot more interesting? I thought so. The New Adventures of He-Man. The days of consuming copious amounts of creatine and injecting oneself with elephant growth hormones had come to a close, at least in the minds of executives at Mattel. They made He-Man starve himself of steroids, gave him a lightsaber, and kicked his ass out to space. Was it a good idea? Meh. Apparently I liked the show enough as a kid to beg my dad to purchase the space helmet He-Man and cybernetic Skeletor. I don't think they were actually called that. I just referred to them that way to differentiate them from their more mystical, muscled out ancestors. I totally dug the sword, but too many kids in the 90s were infatuated with that bulky bodybuilding image of the 80s. Ultimately, children abandoned the show and decided to watch more wholesome programming like Major League Baseball, which was totally free of steroids, said no one ever. Pirates of Dark Water. You know what was all the rage in the 90s? cleaning up the environment. The EPA even put messages on the screens of your favorite arcade games to remind you to clean up your act. And Captain Planet and Toxic Crusaders and other children's programs were actively seeking to recruit young children to become little soldiers for planet Earth. It sort of worked, sort of. I definitely think my generation is a little bit more conscious of the environment than that of my parents. Anyway, in the same manner that some cartoons tried to make kids more aware of the hazards of pollution, Pirates of Dark Water attempted to show children that nature could succumb to malicious forces. But the show was on another planet. You can't ask me to give a damn about your fictitious shit when we got our own planetary problems. I'm sorry, but I don't care about dark water on your planet. I care about clean water on mine. Nice try. Extreme Dinosaurs. What? I don't know what else to say. I never watched the shit. I just know y'all forgot about it because I didn't even know it existed. That's all from me guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content and you believe your peers will too, please share this video. I'm not going to ask you to hit the like button, just please don't hit the dislike button. In reality though, you can totally hit the like button. I'm cool with that. I'm also cool with you hitting the subscribe button and turning on notifications. Yeah? Thank <laughs> you.